This video will be discussing what is termed the Lexis procedure. The Lexis term is an acronym, and it stands for, which bears my name as well, uh, Loria's Excisional Unidirectional Stereoscopic Follicular Unit Extraction Procedure. So we call it the Lexis FUE procedure. Now, this procedure is very sophisticated, it is uh, state-of-the-art, and most physicians throughout the country are not utilizing this particular technique because of the, the challenges involved and the dexterity needed and so forth. And we're going we're gonna to go over that uh, in detail. Okay? Now, let's first understand before we go into what's called the Lexis procedure, let's just review the types of procedures in hair restoration and hair transplantation today. Now, you may have uh, saw uh, or have seen other videos already on my website, but I'm going to briefly review a few items, so it might be slightly repetitious, uh, but it will be good for you because you'll learn uh, these items and review. Okay? Now remember we discussed a strip method. Okay, the strip method is when a strip of skin is removed from the back of the scalp, it's taken out, and it's put on a cutting board, a dissection board, and it's dissected. Remember we discussed that into a thousand or twelve hundred or fifteen hundred grafts. And then those grafts are placed within the recipient sites, which would be in the frontal area the vertex or the crown, okay, wherever is needed. And that's basically a strip method. Now the result of a strip method always is a linear scar in the back of the head. That scar might be very thin or it may be thick, depending on the healing and the surgical capabilities and suturing of the physician. There's a lot of variables involved there. Now I feel strongly that the follicular unit extraction method will uh, put the strip method into extinction. Okay, The strip method, in my opinion, should not ever be performed, or I should say it's not necessary to be performed, since we have such a superior method and procedure available. Now, why are we not moving forward faster in the follicular unit extraction process? For patients. Well, the price has remained so high, right? The strip method price is here and the follicular unit price is here. And why is that? Uh, I believe it should not be so, okay? Uh, a lot of patients, especially in our day and time, uh, find it difficult to be able to afford certain procedures and the strip procedure is becoming less expensive and more attractive. But I feel that the follicular unit extraction procedure should be kind of coming down and you'll see that I am very reasonable in my cost uh, in regarding that. Okay. So, let's go back to our discussion in regarding the strip method. Again, it takes a strip of skin out of the back of the scalp, leaving a severely lo relatively long scar, potentially wide in some cases, because patients all heal differently. And who would want a linear scar anymore? I mean, every transplant doctor years ago, including myself, did that procedure because that was the newest, latest, and greatest at that time in the early 90s, late 90s. But as we got into the early 2000s and now, okay, uh, 2011, the strip method should be a thing of the past, okay? Now let's move on to the follicular unit extraction methods. Because my, my particular procedure, called the Lexus procedure, falls within the category of a follicular unit extraction process. And we'll discuss why it's so different and technically advanced. First of all, we have three general types of follicular unit extraction methods. Okay? The first is a manual. Second is a semi-automatic. The third is a fully automatic process. Okay? Now, what is a manual process when it comes to follicular unit extraction, okay? For example, I could take an instrument like this, okay? This has, this is called a punch device. 
It has a sharp cutting edge, if you can see that clearly. There's a cutting hole, cutting edge here, a tubular cutting instrument. And this basically is held by the surgeon's hand. And in the back of the scalp, okay, let's say back here, he'll take it and he'll cut in and twist. If you notice, I'm twisting. He'll cut into the scalp and twist, okay? Now, this is acceptable for extracting follicular units. However, um, I don't feel it's superior to the Lexus procedure, which it falls into the semi-automatic process, which we will discuss. But this process here, I feel is inferior, acceptable, but inferior because you have a lot of hand motion and rotation. If you're not perfectly straight, rotating and so forth, there's kind of a wobbling that occurs, okay, which can transect the follicle within the skin and can cause more damage, okay? So it's a little riskier, okay? Now, if a surgeon has very good hands and he's doing this a long time, he'd probably be able to do quite well, okay? But it's more challenging, certainly, okay? And the damage rate, you would never know because I don't think that would be disclosed, okay? When there's a damaged follicle, they just most of the time we'll just discard it, okay? And of course, I don't think you'll be aware of that, okay? So this is the manual technique. Now we're going to move into the semi-automatic technique. Now, there are several types of semi-automatic, but let's talk about the general aspects of semi-automatic techniques. So, for example, you'll take an instrument like this, okay? This is a, uh, an engine, Okay, actually the portion of the engine that actually houses the cutting instrument. As you notice in the manual instrument, we have the cutting piece here. Okay, now here we would put our cutting piece inside of this device. Okay, it's kind of like a dental instrument, if you will, that they use within the oral cavity. Okay, now the device that fits here, the cutting tool, is actually here. And I want to show you this. This is in a sterile pack. This is how it should be prepared. But I'm going to open this to show you the size of this particular cutting instrument. There's a reason for that. Okay. Now I'm opening this. Now it's non-sterile, so now it has to be re-sterilized. Now the size of the cuts in the follicular unit area, the donor area, is so tiny that I don't even think you can see this on camera. Okay. I'm going to try and show you that. Okay. It's a point. It ranges between 0.6 and 1 millimeter. This one happens to be 0.8 millimeters in diameter. You can barely see the opening of that little hole there. That's how small the little cuts are in the semi-automatic process, at least with the Lexus procedure. Now, other doctors might use larger. Uh, some might use smaller. However, caution must be used in the size of this particular cutting element because when you're cutting hair out of the back with the follicular unit uh, extraction method semi-automatic, which is this, okay, using this, which would we would place, of course, this in here, okay, and then this would rotate and would cut into the scalp, okay. Now, getting back to the size of this, okay, it depends on the follicular density, the packing, and so forth. There's issues in, in regarding the donor area that you might have to select a smaller or a larger uh, cutting instrument and the doctor has to evaluate the scalp, scalp to make that decision, okay? But getting back to the semi-automatic, you'd use a hand device like this connected to an engine, okay, obviously, and you have your cutting instrument, which is generally a titanium-tipped instrument because it keeps its sharpness longer. That's another issue, okay? The regular steel uh, punches, we call them, uh, do not last as long, they dull quicker, and so forth, okay? The titanium tip, if you could see the color of that tip, I don't know if it shows up clearly, however, it's a titanium tip, holds its strength or sharpness. So, now how is the semi-automatic process, like using a device like this, different than my semi-automatic process? Now, my semi-automatic process is called the Lexus procedure again. The key to, to the Lexus procedure is that we use a device very similar to this for visibility purposes, okay? In other words, when I am extracting the follicular units out of the back of the scalp, okay, my vision is magnified tremendously 
I could see clearly there's efficiency and there's speed involved. When you have proper visibility and lighting, proper instrumentation, proper size on the particular cutting element, and expertise and dexterity within your hands, you can be very efficient and expedite the process of follicular unit extraction. Now, if a physician, for example, is going to use something like these kind of loops or magnifiers, okay, this is inferior, far inferior to a device like this, far inferior. The visibility aspect has dropped tremendously with a device like this or magnifiers like this, okay, if you could see them clearly, okay. So regarding removing the follicular units, okay, the Lexus procedure utilizes a sophisticated piece of equipment for visibility, okay. Of course, I, I don't have operating room lights to show you at this time, but you need tremendous amount of lights, okay, especially the LED light that's under this as well is very powerful, okay, so you have visibility. And lastly, you have a handheld engine device, okay, with the proper instrumentation, proper instrumentation and the proper size to actually make those follicular unit cuts, okay. Now, the Lexus procedure, uh, key elements would be the magnification, the LED lighting, and also the special handpiece used and so forth, all put together, okay, with, with obviously my hands using that. That's why it bears my name. And I would certainly consider training other physicians to help them along uh, with this particular technique because it is far superior to a manual technique, okay, and I believe superior to a fully automatic technique. And we're going to, going to discuss next the fully automatic, okay? And then we'll put things into perspective.